Uh, break was canceled. In exchange, you get me. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm David, and I am here to talk about the PyTorch Mobile experimental release. Uh, so what is PyTorch Mobile? Well, it's PyTorch for mobile. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit silly, uh, but a lot of the questions we get when we talk about PyTorch Mobile are, did you build a brand new framework? Are you going to have to, or are we going to have to export our model to a new format? Are we going to have to port a bunch of operators? Uh, and the answer to all of those is no. So no new framework, no model conversion, uh, no operator porting. Uh, this is just PyTorch built for Android and iOS. And we've made a lot of internal changes to make it work better on mobile, uh, but it's still the PyTorch that you know and love. And we believe that having a unified framework is the best way to enable you all uh, to bring your work from research to production. Now, one decision we did make is not to put a full Python runtime into our mobile build. Uh, that would have been a little bit crazy. So that means that eager mode execution is out of the question on mobile. Uh, but what we do support is any Torch script model. Uh, so you learned about Torch script earlier. It's a large and growing subset of Python that can run most PyTorch models. And that's the technology that PyTorch Mobile is built on. So if your model is compatible with LibTorch using either tracing or scripting, uh, then it can run on mobile. And that means that we support all of the control flow constructs and data types that are supported in, Py in Torch Script. Um, so loops, yes. Functions, yes. Tuples, yes. Even named tuples, also yes. Um, so that all sounds great. Uh, let's talk about how to use it. Um, in case you weren't paying attention to Michael's talk this morning, this is how you uh, write a model with Torch Script. Uh, and if we zoom in on this section down here, uh, it's really just these two lines of code that you have to write, uh, and that's it. Uh, that's going to save your model to a file. You can hand that off to a mobile engineer. Uh, now, mobile engineers, you want to know uh, how to run this. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, first, you need to add a dependency on PyTorch. Uh, that's a one-line configuration uh, on both Android and iOS. And that's going to bring in a pre-built binary uh, that's configured for development. Uh, now you need to write your code to run the model. Uh, so let's look at that. Um, on Android, we have a Java wrapper for LibTorch. And that means that you won't have to use the Android NDK. You don't even need to install the NDK. And I know the NDK is a lot easier to use than it used to be, but it can still be intimidating for app developers who are used to programming in Java. Uh, so we've taken care of all of that for you. Uh, you just write Java code, uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, you have your feature vector. You wrap it in a tensor. You pass that to your model. And you extract your data from the output. So pretty simple. Uh, now on iOS, the API that we expose is the libtorch C++ API. And this gives you the maximum of flexibility and functionality. Uh, but it means that you're going to have to write a small amount of Objective C++ code to bridge between your app, which is probably written in Objective C or Swift, and LibTorch, which is written in C++. Uh, but we think this isn't uh, too significant of an overhead because it uses the same tool chain and the same build process as the rest of your iOS app. Uh, so I'll go through the code. If you've used LibTorch before, it should look very familiar. Uh, again, feature vector. Wrap it in a tensor, run it through your model, and collect your output. Uh, so it's basically the same four lines of code uh, on both platforms to run your model. Uh, and I want to show you uh, what it looks like for real. So we have some demo apps that we're going to be showing uh, in the demo area this evening. Uh, there's one on Android, uh, one on iOS. Uh, the first model in them is a text model. So uh, you type in some text, and it tries to predict uh, which section of Reddit that text came from. The second model is a vision model uh, that's trained on ImageNet. So it takes the live uh, image feed from your phone camera, and it tries to classify what it thinks it's looking at uh, based on the 1,000 uh, classes in ImageNet. And in terms of model architecture, uh, the text model is based on uh, a multi-class classifier uh, using an LSTM that we've been testing in one of our production apps at Facebook. Uh, the image model is based on a quantized MobileNet v2 architecture. And this really emphasizes the benefit of having a unified framework. You can design your model, train your model, test your model with quantization on the server side, and then you can use that same model on mobile because we have the exact same quantization framework, same interface, same semantics. Uh, so though, uh, there are, and there are other uh, PyTorch features that will be getting the same treatment. So for example, you heard about um, uh, 
the deep type conversions uh, this morning, type promotion this morning, um, and that works as well on mobile. Uh, and there's also a name tensor, which is going to be coming to TorchScript soon. And when that's in TorchScript, it will also be available on mobile. Uh, so the code for both of the demo apps is available on GitHub right now. You can check it out. Uh, you can use it as a starting point for your own integrations. Uh, and just as a data point, uh, the Android app is 100% Java. Uh, the iOS is, app is about 85% Swift. Um, so just to recap what we're releasing today, uh, full TorchScript support. I want to emphasize that it is the real TorchScript interpreter that's running on the mobile device. Uh, there are pre-built binary releases already out uh, in JCenter and CocoaPods, one line of configuration to install. Uh, the Java bindings are bundled with the Android version. Uh, and these releases contain all of the forward operators that have CPU implementations. So it should be able to run uh, any of your models, because it's basically a, an everything in the kitchen sink uh, type of release. Uh, now, some of these models have, uh, some of these operators have already been optimized uh, for mobile. Uh, the uh, one we paid the most attention to is Convolution. Uh, and the float version has some optimizations that we brought over from uh, Cafe to Go, which is our uh, existing production uh, deep learning framework for mobile. And the quantized versions are based on QNN Pack, which is a library of highly optimized uh, quantized uh, numerical kernels uh, that we released about a year ago. Um, now, not all of the operators have gotten this optimization treatment, so uh, that brings us to what's coming up. Uh, first and foremost, we want to make things faster. We think we can squeeze a little more water from the stone of these uh, high-value operators, uh, but also find some of the operators that haven't gotten enough attention uh, and make sure they're running up to speed as well. We want to make the release smaller, uh, so that the current sort of kitchen sink build uh, weighs in at about 5 megabytes per architecture. Uh, and the biggest tool that we have for making that smaller is giving you all the ability to build a customized release of PyTorch Mobile that is tailored for your own operators. So for example, if you're releasing an app that has a bunch of vision models, you don't want to be bundling a bunch of code that has text operators in it. That's just a waste. Um, we're experimenting with uh, a wrapper for Objective-C and Swift that we think can lower the barrier to entry for iOS developers even further. And we've talked about doing a Kotlin wrapper, uh, but that, I think, is going to be mo driven more by community demand, uh, because the Java wrapper actually does work pretty well, even from Kotlin. Uh, there are some more uh, long-term projects as well. Uh, we want to add GPU support. So if you've ever programmed a mobile GPU, you probably know it's not quite the same as just running some CUDA kernels. Um, but most mobile chips do have a powerful GPU, and we want to be able to take advantage of this to accelerate your models. Uh, and then even, even further down that spectrum is neural network accelerators, uh, which are starting to show up on some of the newer mobile SOCs. And uh, they can uh, provide even a greater level of performance, uh, but often what comes with that is an even greater level of challenge when you're trying to program, program them. And so if we can sort of hide some of that complexity for you and make it easier for you to run your models on, on those uh, parts of the chip, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, so that's a quick look at what we're planning. Uh, in terms of what you can do today, uh, please visit the mobile page. It's linked right from the top of PyTorch.org. Uh, try out the code. If you're feeling brave, you can ship a production app with it. Uh, this is an experimental release, but we do expect it to work. Uh, but more importantly, tell us how you're using it. You know, come to the PyTorch discussion forum under the mobile topic, post about your app, let us know uh, what's going well for you, and even more importantly, uh, what you'd like to see improved. Because uh, we have a lot more work to do, uh, and your feedback will help guide our designs uh, and also our priorities. Thank you very much.